Ex-Trump lawyer and co-conspirator in the 2020 election fraud case, Jenna Ellis, spilled details about the former president's plans to remain in the White House despite losing. ABC News obtained and released a video of the prosecutor's interview with Ellis, who claimed that Dan Scavino, the former Trump chief of staff, told her at a December 2020 party that Trump wasn't going to cede that he had lost. Let's watch that. I uh, emphasized him. I thought that the, um, the, the claims and the ability to challenge uh, the election results was essentially over because he said um, to me in a kind of excited tone, well, we don't care and we're not going to leave. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, the boss, meaning President Trump and everyone understood the boss. Um, that's what we all called him. Um, he said the boss uh, is not going to leave under any circumstances. We are just going to stay in power. And I said to him, well, it doesn't quite work that way, you realize. And he said, we don't care. Here's Sidney Powell, also co-defendant in the case. Take a look. Ms. Powell, were you ever around when someone, anyone, told uh, Donald Trump that he had lost the election? Oh, yeah. Who? Uh, Pat Cipollone, Eric Hirschman, Derek Lyons, all thought he'd lost. Was that in the December 18th meeting? Yes. What, what was um, President Trump's reaction when I guess this cadre of advisors would say you lost. It was like, uh, well, they would say that and then they'd walk out and he'd go see this is what I deal with all the time. Meanwhile, a new report from Axio seems to blow the lid off of former President Trump's plan to centralize and expand his authority at every level of U.S. government should he win re-election. According to the outlet, Trump's team has been pre-screening possible tr pro-Trump loyalists, 54,000 or so, to install in the federal government. MSNBC's Joy and Reid blasted Trump's plan. Let's take a look. One of the chief architects of Project 2025 is a former Trump advisor, Stephen Miller, the white nationalist Dracula behind draconian and cruel Trump immigration policies like the Muslim ban and separating immigrant children from their families and putting them in cages. That, Stephen Miller, has even more disgusting, racist immigration plans. When people tell you who they are, believe them. All Joy and Reed's doing there is giving you reasons, you know, to, to bend the knee, Suck it up and vote for Joe Biden. To get of rid course, of the kids in cages. Get, it's very important. We're going to we're gonna get we a, need to stop that. a whole new round of all of the yeah. old reasons why Donald Trump was not qualified to be president, reminding you all of the baddies from the Trump era. Um, that is what it is. People come get into office. They put their people in charge. I don't know that that's particularly remarkable, other than she's doing a certain degree of water carrying for the Democratic Party there. What do you make, though, of these uh, deposition testimony clips that we're now seeing from some of the co-conspirators? I, I do want to address that. Oh, sure. and we'll get to that. But just before we move on or move back to that, there's a lot of the fear and the concern I'm seeing from Joy and Reid type people and, and mainstream people about you know, the list of, of people that Trump, Trump supporters, MAGA people, who will staff these institutions if he takes over, and how dangerous and threatening that is, is just so rich. Because right now, those institutions are all staffed by people who have agendas. Um, many of them have agendas I disagree with and Trump voters disagree with. Um, probably a lot of them have agendas, frankly, you disagree with from Absolutely. the other way. Because Biden also has doubled down and worsened some of Trump's Yes. immigration policies. The beautiful thing about Donald Trump was when he said, I'm going to do a Muslim ban. It got struck down by the courts because he was so obvious about the fact that he was going to ban people on the basis of the religion. It was unconstitutional. When Joe Biden does stuff, he does it neatly, illegally, and cleanly, and is able to get away with, in some instances, more worse things. Right. Trump people have an agenda. They want to staff the federal bureaucracy with people who have different views on Funding, how to fund education and, and school choice, um, immigration policies that probably I don't actually even agree with, but that's what, that's what the voters want to do. The idea that you, you can't, like, oh, no, we would choose to put Trump in office and then he would staff it with people who support his vision is just not, is not sinister for democracy. <laughs> the idea that the federal bureaucracy should operate independent of, of which political vision has won according to the will of the people, that is actually authoritarian. <laughs> that is counter-democratic. Maybe uh, people like Joanne Reed think the status quo favors her ideology or that the, when, when left alone behind closed doors, there's kind of a knee-jerk 
center left or, or kind of woke progressivism that isn't uh, you know that isn't left economic stuff the way you'd want and certainly isn't mm -hmm. conservative or libertarian and so please there's no one involved in the production of the show but is the default for federal bureaucracy it is not wrong to win an election and then replace some of that, which is purely what Trump is trying to do in the, in the same way that, that if Trump was staffed with all those people and then lost an election, as he did last time, to Joe Biden or to a, to a more left candidate, they would have different policy proposals and they would have different people to implement them. It's just not, it's not at all sinister the way it's being framed. Uh, elect, I mean, it's, it goes to the cliche that elections have some consequences and that's yes, the way it is. I will say, I do think that Stephen Miller, his politics are well outside side of the American norm. I don't think he's representative, and I do think it would be very bad for him to be in charge. But that's a reason to push Democrats to elect a more electable candidate who is more aligned with what the people really do want, drop Biden, or at least get Biden to back mm -hmm. some policies that are actually populist in nature. All right, so we let, let's address the deposition there. Um, now, again, you, you might disagree with this. I, I don't know that they advance the narrative that Trump is guilty of some crime necessarily by just pointing out that he was told over and over again that he'd lost the election. Um, that obviously is clear, that he had people tell him that, and he rejected that, and then and relied on more sycophantic figures who were, you know, you're telling me there's a chance, there's still a chance kind of thing. Um, obviously, it doesn't look good for Trump, but he has, pers you know, persisted to this day. Persists in the belief that he won. I, I think he's slightly changed up the reasons he thinks that. Um, it, I remember when he did that town hall with Caitlin Collins a few months back. Mm -hmm. It was more on the well, it was illegitimate because of, frankly, because of the Hunter Biden laptop story and malfeasance on tech and things that are, you know, might have been. A, were in fact unfair or wrong, but not in a not in a well. That means the election was invalid. Sense just in a well, people bad actors or can put out bad information there, and if that sways people, that's no good. Well, I, I think what this is starting to get to, and obviously these are just clips of testimony, and only two of nineteen is it co-defendants that we have uh, here in this case. But already we're getting to testimony that starts to undermine the claim that Donald Trump sincerely knew, or sincerely believed, rather, that the election was stolen. And so I do think it's going to end up being this uh, credibility determination of mm -hmm. if all of your advisors, of all of your legal advisors, of all of these people close to you repeatedly told you that you had not, in fact, won the election, not just in a blanket way, but specifically contesting the evidence that you keep raising as to why you think that you really won stuffed ballot boxers or whatever other narratives were, were floating around. And you persist in your belief that you won based on nothing. And if it ultimately does come out in some of this testimony that he might have even acknowledged or admitted to someone, yeah, I know, but we're going to keep trying, then he is made much more vulnerable right. to the election interference Well, that charge. would make him more vulnerable. But, I mean, what... Sidney Powell says there is that when the when the people who said that left the room, he dismissed them as 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 wrong or trying to undermine him in some way. Again, I would not want to hinge the case on whether you can prove that Donald Trump doesn't actually think he won the election. Now, what I'm interested to see if Jenna Ellis or Sidney Powell or any of these others have um, information about Trump's awareness of some of the steps that they were going to take, mm -hmm. um, like. Um, you know, documents being forged, mm -hmm. or ho trying to trying to hold the meeting with the with the wrong slate of electors at the time they were supposed to be meeting that happened in one place. That's the kind of actual conspiracy stuff where there's actual it, it goes beyond what I think mm -hmm. or what I'm saying, um, and and mm -hmm. hinges on some actual potentially criminal action that is all going to be pinned on Trump. So I, I, look, I think his goose is frankly cooked in the Georgia matter in particular. And, you know, whether, uh, whether the voters on the Republican side reckon with that still remains to be seen. Yeah, I, th I think that Ellis, um, Jenna Ellis saying, you know, I'm not, if Trump really did, and this is, this is here, so she's saying that someone else said to her that this is what Trump said. Mm -hmm. But if Trump really did say, a priori, I'm not going to concede. I'm not going to step down under any circumstances. I think that also does go to the core of, is there anything that he could have been told that would have made him want to step down? And if the answer is no, then there's not a really credible basis for him saying he's going to stay in. He's delus being delusional or being, um, you know, uh, authoritarian and saying you're going not to respect the, the result of the election is not a defense. 
mm -hmm. to not stepping down. I mean, that's that's basically, I think, the nature of what Jenna Ellis' testimony there was. I'd be very interested to see more uh, where that came from, if it exists. And if not, maybe uh, Donald Trump has a fighting chance. Yeah, we'll see. More rising right after this.